In this video, we're starting to discuss particle size or particle distribution in ground coffee. Welcome, my name is Patrick Rolf and this is Coffee with April. For this video, we are starting to share some insights and thoughts on coffee grinding. Now, coffee grinding is complicated um, for a lot of different reasons. One, because the tools we have measuring grind size is inadequate in a lot of ways. Two, we're not scientists, right? So the measurements and the ideas that we share in this video is by no means 100% science, right? This is us just trying to kind of peel the first layer of the complexity that comes with grind size and trying to understand this better. So we want to share a little bit how we work with it, how we measure it, and the kind of initial findings. So one of the things that we do is that we measure particle distribution and particle size based on what we're brewing here in the April store, for example. It's part of our initial QC protocol as well. It's something that you can use to, for example, figure out how well is your burst performing over time. It's something that you can use looking at, okay, so we have different coffees on bar, which grind size are we starting with, right? So it's trying to be a little bit more efficient in how we're dialing in. And then on top of that, if we translate it over to competitions, it's about figuring out can grind size and understanding that better help us brew the best coffee in the world? That's really the question here, right? So we would just wanna use this video to say that we're looking into this. We're gonna come with a lot more videos that is a bit more in depth. We're a little bit geeky here. We're taking a lot of that conversation on Patreon as well. We wanna start the conversation, share the little bit of knowledge that we are starting to accumulate, and we wanna hear your thoughts and your opinions on it. Something that been discussed for a very long time is the uniformity in grind size. And I think anyone that starts measuring grind size realizes that there's basically no grinder in the coffee world that are able to perform that. In fact, it's hard to find a grinder in any kind of shape and form affordable in the coffee world and usable in the professional coffee world that gives you a particle distribution of any particle size that is more than maybe 40 to maximum 50%. Everything else is gonna be a spread, right? And what we're trying to understand is what is causing that spread and maybe initially here in this video, what happens if you grind a bunch of different coffees on the same grind size? Because that's also something that is very relatable, one, to multi-roaster shops around the world, and then two, to you home brewers, right? It's hard to navigate, and we're trying to kind of here showcase what you can consider initially and just how complicated this actually is. So we're gonna move in, share a little bit of numbers here. It's gonna be a bit geeky. Do just a quick comparison and then kind of come back with some ideas and thoughts on what we're investigating further as a kind of a second step. So in front of me, I have five different coffees. These are all from the April range. And something that we have been advocating for a long time is that roast degree matters in terms of how the coffee or particle size coming out on a ground coffee, right? So that's something you have to always consider. So if you brew coffee from multiple roasteries frequently, you want to have an initial idea about how that coffee was roasted, especially in terms of color, to be able to then better decide where do I want to be grind size. Now, another conversation we often have is the impact of processing, the impact on varietal, or what translates to maybe density in a coffee on grind size, right? Then there's a lot of other factors as the amount of CO2, the temperature of the beans, the temperature of the grinder, and so on and so on, right? As you can tell, this is gonna get complicated. And in this video, we're just gonna take it really simple, share some initial numbers, uh, initial numbers, and then kind of take it from there. So the coffees in front of me um, are from a few different places, which is interesting. Uh, we're starting with two different measurements of um, a filter and espresso roast of the same coffee, single farmer product Sevde from Ethiopia. And this is kind of interesting because, again, these are all grind on the same grind size. So the difference in microns here is quite high, it's almost 70 points. Uh, it goes from 682 on the espresso 
which is then smaller, to 751 on the filter, right? So it's one of the things that we've seen quite continuously, that again, there is a big difference in terms of the actual particle size that comes out in between two different roast degrees of the same coffee, right? Now, this can get even more complicated because it's not just a difference in size, it's also different in the distribution of what that size contain, right? So whenever you do a measurement, there's a very small portion that are the majority of the size, the rest is just spread out over what we call basically fines up to boulders. Now, that's next level stuff and for another video, but that's something that we are coming back to. Another interesting measurement is two different bridles from the same farm that are roasted to a relatively similar color, not identical, but relatively similar, and grinded on the same grind size. And we see that the measurements are actually coming out very similar. So we have an SL28 varietal from Alejo de Volcanazul, comes out at 678, and then we have an Obata varietal that comes out at 685. So then we have two different varietals that are actually generating a quite similar distribution or similar particle size, though. The individual distribution differs a little bit. Now, one can argue here, okay, there's two different varietals, then maybe a varietal doesn't matter, but taking a closer look at the coffee, they're actually processed relatively similar. So one coffee is an anaerobic red honey, another coffee is a natural, which could be an indication that the processing, for example, matters more than the initial varietal, right? Again, it's something that we're gonna look into in the future. Um, one of the interesting things, for example, is that the Obata has a lot more larger particles than SL28 in this reading. So there's also definitely a difference in the shattering of the beans for that individual coffee. Now, the last coffee we have, and we kind of wanted to measure the difference between a washed and a natural Ethiopian coffee. Now, these are grown at different places. Um, these are different varietals. So it's hard to say that it's an exact comparison, but again, just a general idea of what's kind of going on here. And we saw that, for example, then the 70 filter was at 751 microns, whereas the Ersosala was at 715, also with a little bit more larger particle sizes, right? So basically what we're taking away from here is that we ground five different coffees from different parts of the world, different processing, and they're on the same grind size and they come out very, very differently, right? And on a very simple term, this is gonna affect your brewing at home, this is gonna affect your brewing in coffee shops, in competitions, wherever you are, right? Uh, so basically what we're trying to come up with now is some more just specific ideas and thoughts on this that actually proves a little bit more, again, in an unscientific way, but still with a little bit of proper equipment, that it does matter, right? And using the kind of tools that we're doing, we're currently working with one of the Lytels products that we purchased ourselves, so there's no sponsoring here, um, is giving us a little bit of extra insight, right? And we can take this and convert this from this grinder to other grinders. Um, and we're seeing quite similar results in the fact that it really doesn't make sense to grind two different coffees the same way because the result you're getting is way too different. Now, we're gonna stop here before we get too geeky and it becomes too much to handle. Again, we're gonna portion this out over several videos in the future. We've already posted a bunch of stuff on Patreon and take that conversation there. We're super happy to get any inputs, any thoughts on what you're thinking as well. Um, and we're kind of really curious to see where we can take this and if it helps us then understand just how we can brew better coffee um, in a more interesting way, right? So with that, we wanna thank you for, for watching. Um, join us on Patreon, take that conversation there and feel free to comment below as well. Um, what is your experience with it? Um, are you a professional that have similar tools and done similar measurements? Or are you just kind of at home trying to figure all of this out by yourself? What are the more complicated things and what is it that you would like to know about your grind size? Because um, if you let us know, maybe we can look it up for you. So with that, thank you for watching and have a great day. We want to give a special thank you to all of our Patreon supporters. It's because of you that we are able to continue to make these videos. And we want you all to feel free to always come with suggestions and ideas on the content that you want to see uh, because we are doing this for you and because of you. Thank you from all of us here at April.